Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part four of this news bulletin today. Friday, October 12th, 2012, I'm Darko. My website's ggnonline.com. And on YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. Okay, so all the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. It's probably going to take me a while to get all those in there. But the videos um, will be uploaded soon. So this is the fourth video. Um, maybe we'll get into a fifth one. But uh, I, this is all eugenics news that I've been meaning to get to for like the past month or two. So I'm just going to bust it out if I have to take five videos, whatever. Um, so here we go. We left off with this. Well, humans eventually all look like Brazilians, the coffee-colored mix, right? And you can be rest assured that there's going to be white elites at the top running this brave new world. And um, they themselves will retain their genetics while they want us to uh, homogenize, right? And uh, we have this, multicultural soup says top builder burger, right? Individuality obsolete in other words. So EU would undermine national homogeneity, says UN migration chief. So the EU should do its best to undermine uh, this homogeneity of its, I'm sorry, I'm from hacking that word, of its member states, the UN special rep said for migration. He told his peers the future prosperity of many U EU states depend on them becoming multicultural, right? He also suggests that the UK government's immigration policy had no basis in international law. He was being quizzed by the, e by the Lord's EU uh, Home Affairs Subcommittee, which is investigating global migration. He told the House of Lords Committee migration was a crucial dynamic for economic growth in some EU nations. However, difficult it may be to explain this to the citizens of those states. An aging or declining native population in countries like Germany or southern EU states was the key argument. And I hesitate to use the word because people have attacked it for the development of multicultural states, he added. It is impossible to consider that the degree of this um, homogeneity, which is implied by other arguments, uh, can survive because states have to become more open states in terms of the people who inhabit them, just as the UK has demonstrated. And they're having problems there, too. I mean, all the Muslims that go there are being uh, uh, completely surveilled, just like <clears throat> everybody else, right? There's cameras everywhere and, uh, in London and all that. And it creates uh, tension and stuff like that. Plus, there's people that are ethnic uh, um, English men, as they put it, and they don't have jobs, and yet they'll sit there and allow all of these foreigners to come in and immigrate into their country. So, yeah, the UN Special Representative on Migration was also quizzed about what the EU should do about this. And he goes on and says that the migrants uh, were higher in the U.S. and Australia than EU countries. He said the U.S., Australia, and New Zealand are migrant societies and therefore accommodate more readily those from other backgrounds than we do ourselves who still nurse a sense of our uh, homogeneity and difference from others. He says, and that's precisely what the European Union, in my view, should be doing its best to undermine. They actually criticized the UK's government attempt to cut net migration from its current levels. British higher education chiefs want non-EU overseas students to be exempted from migration statistics. And so they don't want to send the signal that this is in some way unsympathetic environment in which to seek visas or whatever permissions are required. So what they're talking about is this, studying in Britain, one big immigration scam. A London college ranked as highly trusted by the UK border agency has been accused of helping foreign students cheat the immigration system. According to Sky News, the investigation discovered that diploma certificates and dissertations were for sale inside a London college. It also revealed that some 159,000 people are thought to be in Britain despite their student visas have expired saying that it has been well known for some time that the foreign student system is a scam. And back to multiculturalism, it is no boon to education but an agent of anti-Western ideology. Back to school nowadays means back to classrooms, lessons, and textbooks permeated by multiculturalism and championing of diversity. Many parents and teachers regard multiculturalism as an indispensable educational supplement, a salutary influence that enriches the curriculum. That they don't write, of course, right? Because it's written by the eugenicist policymakers. So the writer talks about the teaching of history and how they teach it. And uh, that what multiculturalists seek is not the goal they advertise, but something else entirely. One textbook acclaims the inhabitants of West Africa in pre-Columbian times for having prosperous economies and for establishing a university of Timbuktu, but it ignores a brutal trade in slaves and the proliferation of far more uh, consequential institutions. 
Also, some books uh, lionize the architecture of Aztecs, Aztecs, sorry, but purposely overlook the underplay the fact that they practice human sacrifices. A few textbooks seek to portray Islam as a peaceful, as peaceful in part by presenting the concept of jihad or sacred war to mean the integral struggle to surmount temptation and evil while playing down Islam's actual wars of religious conquest. So they went on and say multiculturalism's goal is not to teach about other cultures, but to promote by means of distortions and half-truths the notion that non-Western cultures are as good as is, or as if not better than Western culture. It seeks to diminish the value of Western culture in the minds of students. In other words, the multiculturalist must artificially elevate other cultures and depreciate the West. And I saw an article about uh, down in Texas, uh, bleaching, bleach bombs, and stuff like that on minorities. Then I saw this article from October 9th, Supreme Court to hear a case brought by a white student who claims race cost her admission to the University of Texas. On the other side are lawyers from the University of Texas who argue that, like many other universities, UT seeks to assemble a class that is diverse in innumerable ways, including race, and that race is just one of many characteristics that form the mosaic presented by an applicant's file. In 1997, Texas passed the Top Percent Law, which mandates that Texas high school seniors in the top percent of their class be automatically admitted to any Texas state university. But after the Grutter decision came down, another policy was added that allows <clears throat> for schools to consider race among several other factors for admission. She didn't qualify for automatic admission and was forced to compete with other uh, non-top 10% state applicants. She said she was denied admission even though her academic credentials exceeded those of some of the admitted minority candidates. All right, I got some crazy stories here for you. Majority doesn't want government to promote traditional values. It's a first in a CNN poll that finds for the first time in history a majority of Americans do not think the government should promote traditional values. In 2010, 53% of voters said it should be and the number had been higher in 2008 said, but this time around, the number was just 4 in 10. Uh, between 93, 1993, when CNN began asking that question, last year, majority of respondents have always said that the government should promote traditional values, and now for the first time, um, they say that the government should not favor any particular set of values. No longer a U.S. majority is the Protestants. One-fifth of the U.S. doesn't identify with any traditional religion. The U.S. population is no longer dominated by Protestants, a Pew study finds. They say religion as a whole in America has been astonishingly resilient. Remember what I said, I refer to religion as organized spirituality. I really can't stand it. Um, but it is, it, it, it is uh, kind of surprising that we don't have more, um, uh, more nihilists and stuff like that. Man busted for a plot to bomb 48 churches. A mentally ill man targeted Oklahoma churches. He's been charged under state anti-terrorism laws. Wheeler's parents both committed suicide, and he has battled drug addiction, has a lot of mental illnesses. But here's the kicker, guys, right? With his, med with his medication, he's perfectly fine and functional. But family members believe that he must have stopped taking his medication. Well, that's what he did, right? They're fine, and then, uh, you know, they just need family to be there for them. And then they say, well, uh, you didn't take the family's there when they say what? Oh, well, you didn't take your pills, see? And it's to, when they come off the pills, that's what causes, kicks in the, the suicidal tendencies. So, But they don't ever talk about that, the pharmaceutical complex and the media that supports it. Cheerleaders fight for Bible verses. Cheerleaders in a small East Texas town that worships two things, God and football, are now fighting back after Bible verses they painted on banners to display at games were banned. So people come on board and say the same thing. This is not a Christian school and they cannot misuse their authority. So, But uh, either way, back in the day, it was probably a norm, right? Then student cured of being gay sues California, a college student who claims he had same-sex attractions but became heterosexual after a conversion therapy has filed a lawsuit against California, which has recently enacted a law that bans so-called gay cures for minors. They allege that the law banning the therapy intrudes on First Amendment protections of free speech, privacy, and freedom of religion. How about freedom of allowing yourself to heal whoever you want, right? But it's all one way, right? That's all this uh, PC, politically correct BS. It, all, it always goes one way, and that's coming straight from the top down. If you're, if you're, if you're not for it, you're going to get smashed. You're going to get smashed by the complex, the media complex, and, and um, all of these rights groups. Uh, Radio Shack sells kid, 13 years old, porn-filled cell phone. So mom is unamused and suing Radio Shack. So and to be honest with you, uh, I didn't have internet when I was 13 back in the 90s, but 
uh, most people now have internet and so I mean they probably already has access to porn so Toronto School Board web link offers kinky sex advice this is what I was talking about this is in um, this is in uh, Canada so an astounding link on Toronto Toronto's district school board website entices children to experiment sexually with vegetables has a Christian group calling for criminal investigation it has a lot of others vex, perplex, and scratching their heads. Who is behind the school board's curtain pulling these curious strings? So it says most of us learn that our bodies and our sex are things to be ashamed of. It says most of us learn that sex means a man on top of a woman and blah, 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 and abstinence. But uh, sex can be a lot of things, including women having sex with women, men with men, women having sex with men, and sometimes the best sex is with yourself. Then it says there are lots of some fun ways to get off, which you probably won't learn in school. Don't don't feel like you have to do everything on this page, but don't feel like everything is automatically off limits either. Fifty Shades of Fetish at Folsom St. Fair. This is from the 24th of September. Men and women danced on pedestals at the West End Fair in San Francisco. They attracted thousands of participants and curious spectators to celebrate alternative sexuality where men in leather chaps and studded vests and police-like hats, citizens in latex bodysuits and hoods that cover their faces and women in corsets and fishnet stockings carrying whips. So like all of the other uh, trends that I've uh, presented for you uh, here in these news reports here, it says that uh, the contingent of Lukey Lou's and t-shirts and jeans seemed larger this year than in the past. So some of the ranks included students from Skyline College who attended for extra credit in human sexuality class. I was surprised by people getting led around by ropes in their necks. Someone who was dominant leading the other person around said uh, a 19-year-old student. I'd never seen a naked person in public before, said the classmate 19. At first it was shocking, but at, at these events downtown it's normal. I'm trying to get used to it. So this year, a 49-year-old, having read Fifty Shades, came with a friend. She goes, I think this is too hardcore for Fifty Shades audiences. They may th like to think that they're ready, but I think they'd get two blocks in and say, honey, let's go. So, But that's part of it, right? That's part of the incremental um, engineering process. Then a woman streaks at a youth soccer game, and I'm sure that many of you have seen these articles already. This is from October 1st, but uh, I just wanted to put them all together, right? It says that we have no idea where or exactly when this video was shot, but we don't care. As a topless woman painted her breast white and blue and ran out into the field before a soccer match, a youth soccer match, in a video uploaded on YouTube on Saturday. The person who uploaded the video alleges that the person, the woman, was wasted. So, just like everything else, and this is why alcohol should not be allowed at youth sports events. Well, they're not allowed, actually, at uh, a double-A, triple-A uh, professional hockey. When I remember covering that a couple of years ago, professional hockey, right? And you, they didn't have alcohol because of the fans, you know, they were going to fight or something like that. It's like, dude, it's hockey. But nonetheless, alcohol doesn't cause a grown woman to go on a youth soccer game and show her breasts, okay? There's something wrong. There's something very seriously wrong with our society. That's what I'm trying to say. I just get tired of these half-ass excuses that uh, people give, right? That we have to ban and take people's rights away. You know, just be responsible. Mother's fury as son's seventh birthday party at public school, or public pool, sorry, had full view of men's naked swim session. The group of, group of 20 nude men take a dip as kids and their parents were eating in Leisure Center Canteen. The staff tried to shield them from view by taping bin bags and paper over the windows and horrified the moms, criticized bosses for allowing the clash. The mix-up came after bosses at the pool accepted their first ever booking by the men's naturist group. A lawyer says it's bad medicine that led to a Pennsylvania family to strip naked. The attorney for a woman who stripped naked with three of her children outside a suburban Philadelphia high school says an adverse medical reaction triggered the psychotic episode. So something weird going on there. The lawyer says that the medications for lupus led the 44-year-old mother to think the world was ending. Police say the family members then shed their clothes in the parking lot and chanted religious uh, phrases. So again, this was at a high school. Then get a grip on family policy, as the ex-minister says, as a shocking report claims half of all children will see parents separate. And of course, this is part of the design, like I said. Like Kurt Cobain said in that uh, documentary about a son or whatever, he said it was like a plague. Everybody can can see it when they were younger. And he was in the 70s, I think, like that. And to me in the 80s. And I could see, like, like half the people I knew, their parents were separated. This, of course, is to destroy and fragment uh, the families, which then um, changes and alters society so that nobody, everybody's left out on their own to fend for themselves against this 
uh, Brave New World. Something to shudder about is genetically modified three-parent teenagers. So join me in part five. Thank you.